Heading down to Malongo Creek at dawn. Off to the reef. Well, we finally had a really good forecast to give us a chance to get out to the reef. Um, this is a Cape Upstart. We launched out of Malongo Creek and we're heading out to Old Reef. It's an 8 mile run out to the end of Cape Upstart which we're approaching and then another 26 miles to Old Reef. This is by far the smallest footballer trout I've ever seen. It would have been lucky to be 15 centimetres long. We're so lucky we got out to Old Reef and the conditions were absolutely perfect. It was flat as a tack, it was at least 25 metres viz and covered in beautiful leopard trout. They weren't huge leopard trout, I don't think I would have seen one over two kilos. The average was one kilo to one and a half kilos and of course a fair sprinkling of undersized ones as well. The boat float was fantastic. We always had the uh, white tip and black tip reef sharks following us around. They'd obviously seen a few divers and uh, there's no way you could have left fish on your float. And the last thing you want to do is swim backwards and forwards to the boat. The great thing about my homemade boat float is that no fish blood or juice drips into the water at all. I can put a couple of frozen bottles in the surfboard bag to keep the fish in premium condition before I get back to the main boat. There were barramundi cod and maori wrasse all over this reef. It shows you that the protection has just greatly increased their numbers, out of all proportion probably to what they should be. The majority of the trout were up in the shallows, you didn't really have to dive anything more than 10 metres to pick these guys up. Did a few deeper dives around the 15 metre mark but there was just less fish. The odd red throat sweet lip, a very low variety of edible fish other than parrot fish. The only pelagic fish we saw were a few shark mackerel cruising through here and there. There was good bait and a little bit of current coming onto points but uh, yeah, just no sign of any Spanish or uh, no trevally either for that matter.
There were so many trout on this reef, we didn't feel bad taking our limit so that we could take some beautiful trout fillets home to share with the rest of the family. We uh, always respect our catch, bleed, ice, everything, kill the fish as quickly as possible, and then we uh, fry back the fillets and take them home in perfect nick so we can enjoy them for the coming months. Nice work, Dodgy. Got your first ever legal red emperor. 59 centimetres. Magic. That's beautiful. Well done. That's going to be a delicious eating fish. We've got our bag limit of trout, so what do you reckon we're going to have a fish? Try to get something else. Absolutely. Well, the fishing was a bust. We didn't catch anything decent. Um, but we did have the most magnificent conditions to come home, enjoyed a couple of cold great northerns, just absolutely perfect days diving, doesn't get any better than this. Unfortunately the weather didn't hang in for the next day. Final days diving, heading up to Abbott Point, flowing hard southwester, cold, the water looks alright so hopefully we'll get some viz. Dodgy's already having his first dive on the tiller. Very ugly. Shallows. Well, we're here and it's clear and we've copped another beating. We'll get a beating on the way home. It's freezing cold. Gotta get in the water. This section of coast has some really big ledges that hold a lot of fish or for you D-stick, some big cracks all over the bottom. This would be the clearest water we've ever had up here. We were uh, able to see everything you wanted from the surface. Very pleasant diving. The water was fairly cold though, um, but really, really nice and clear. Saw some big schools of these really large diamond trevally and I never shot a decent one before so I thought I'll have to. We had um, some people back at the units who were very very keen for some fish so this is going to be a nice present for them. Big sladies hanging around are often a sign of other good fish in the area and uh, Dodgy actually saw a big school of finger mark and thought they were sladies but uh, I didn't even get to see them so at least he got to see them. Gold spot cod are absolutely delicious eating, especially when they're on the smaller side like this one. Very nice. 
This has got to be one of the most annoying ways you can possibly lose a fish. I thought everything's fine. But, oh no, flopper has closed from the sediment and off goes the trout. I was extremely annoyed about that. I spent about 15 minutes looking for that trout under all of these cracks, but I uh, just couldn't find him. This giant crack held a nice coastal trout which unfortunately left the crack before I could get a shot into it. This spot always has lots of blueies, but uh, someone had given it a pretty good hammering the day before and the big ones were very, very skittish, so we had to settle for some nice eating size ones. This place holds some of the biggest graphic tusk fish I've ever seen and I really wanted to get one decent sized one. I've never shot a really good sized graphic so this was my opportunity. The graphic tusk fish have got this very distinctive white spot down towards the tail which disappears after you shoot them.
All the fish spearing finally got the attention of this pretty large wobby. Very funky looking one as well, different from the ones we have at home. Wobby Big Diamond Trevally, never shot one before. Big blood clot, <laughs> just came, big blood clot just came out of me. Stoned it. What else we get? Some nice trout. Plenty of blueies. Got a good uh, graphic cuss fish. Lovely blueies. Oh, we got a good feed. Here we go. Today's catch. What do we get? Seven, six blueies. One graphic tusky. Nice coastal cod. A massive diamond trevally which we never got before. Hold up, hold up your two diamonds. Lord. Beautiful. They go hard. Uh, one are pretty much stone, the other one was pretty hard. Uh. Yeah. Species. Good yeah. Awesome. Very good.